guys an update on my Dansko United States typeset album 7070 and uh, I'm very proud of what I have been able to accomplish on this. I've been working hard to try to complete it and uh, let me show you what I have all in here. So I've got a few graded coins that I've taken out of the slaps and uh, I'm trying to put together a collection of the very best coins that I can afford. Some of these coins I do plan on upgrading but uh, for now, I think I've done a pretty decent job. So here are the half cents. This uh, album starts off with half cents. And you can see there's an 1804 draped blessed half cent. Very nice detail. I don't know if you can really make out all the detail there. But very nice detail. It has been cleaned. But these things, and with this detail, at the price I paid for this, it's hard to find, so I was okay with it being cleaned. You can tell it's been cleaned because you can see some pink right there, and the pink around the edges, And uh, but very nice detail. And then I've got a classic head. That's an 1832. Again, some very nice detail on that as well. This coin was just added today, actually. Uh, these are very hard to find in local coin shops. I mean, I thought I was going to have to buy one from eBay, and it is nicer than what it looks like. I think there's something on the album there, especially right there by her nose, because that's not there when you look at it. Maybe the camera's picking up something that uh, the eye can't see, or at least my eye can't see, but uh, oh, no, there is a little bump on there. I can see that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's still a very nice coin. It's a, a coronet braided half cent. Braided here, half cent. Very difficult to find these at coin shops. I, this was the only, I was really shocked that I was able, the coin shop that I visited today actually had this available because none of the coin shops I visited seemed to have these. So very, very cool. And then you come down to your large cents and I have two of these. This is a Drape Bust 1803 large scent, and uh, that moved around in here. It, it was uh, slabbed as genuine. It has environmental damage on it. There's a little bit of corrosion, but the details are really good. Very good on that. I need a classic head. I could add one for my large scent album, but I don't really want to take from that. I want to get one just for this, so I, I need to find one of these. There's a Coronet. 1833 large scent, very good detail on that. And an 1854 coronet braided hair large scent. And then we come down to small scents. There's a flying eagle, 1857 first year of issue. And pretty decent detail. It's You can see it's worn on the wings there. And it does have some damage on the rim, so I will replace that in the future. Along with this one, I'll replace first year of issue Indian Head, the Laurel Reef variety. But I will say, even though that this is sort of has, uh, is covered in crud here, it does have the full Liberty, and it does have the full necklace. And then I need to get a copper nickel one. I've been looking at those. Those are very inexpensive for the most part. So I just gotta find one, put in there. I, I will only put Indian heads that have the full necklace and the full Liberty. It's very important for me when I look for coins for this album. So there's a 1906 bronze. And then I've got a very nice, what I consider to be very nice VDB. It has a lot of luster on it. It's a beautiful brown too. And then a proof wheat head penny, which looks like there's some stuff under the plastic there. So one thing I hate about the dance goes if, if this thing is scratched right here, then it makes your coins look scratched. Cause see, when you take this off, these coins look so much better. But hey, these are supposed to protect your coins, which I'd rather have this plastic piece scratched than my coins, so. And you guys have all seen the backs of most of these coins. I got the half cents, 
you've got the large sense and the small sense. Oh, and then the three cent pieces, the trimes, and then the two cent pieces there. And very nice Lincoln steel scent there. With a lot of luster on it. Then we come up here to half dimes. Haven't been able to find a cap bust half dime yet. And I will probably upgrade this. That's pretty worn. I, I go to coin shops and I have not been able to find this one yet at a coin shop, so I might have to buy this one online. The uh, five cent piece, the shield nickel with rays. It's been very hard to find. And 1867 shield scent. And then I've got a very, very nice 1883 Liberty Head nickel. A lot of luster on that. A 1910 Liberty head nickel. Has some wear on her hair, but it does have the full word Liberty there. This one I added last week, a 1930 or 1913 variety one buffalo head. And there's a variety two here. And the way you know, what, what's the difference you might ask? Well, it's all about the back and that little piece of ground that they're standing on. You see here how this is a flat line and it doesn't appear to be raised. Well, that's the type two, whereas the type one is not flat, and it's actually raised a little bit. Let's see if I can zoom up on this. It's actually raised. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's very high relief. So the reason they changed that was because they were wearing quickly and they changed that to make it a little bit more durable design. So I got a really nice, got a good deal on that from a local coin shop. Variety two, got your Jefferson nickels, got a really nice silver, 35% war nickel. The cap bust variety two dime. And I just upgraded this today. The Liberty Seated Dime. And then I got a Barber Dime. Beautiful Mercury Dime. And then you got your Roosevelt Dimes, and I got a proof in there. It has a mirror-like finish on it, and looks like a little bit of a cameo. And again, you guys have seen the backs, I think, of most of these coins. Very nice buffalo nickels. And then I got a 20 cent piece. I would really like to get a nicer one. That's pretty worn. They are kind of expensive though. And this, if you look at this, this has some nice toning. It's hard to catch on the camera, but it does have like a rainbow toning. Let me see if I can't get the camera to capture that. You really can't. I got a nice 1834 cap bus quarter. I really like those quarters. I think that design is cool. And then I've got a, and this also has some toning, that Liberty Seated quarter, 1856 Nomado. And then I got a Liberty Seated quarter with arrows. And Liberty Seated quarter with the motto, and you can see her face is very worn on that one compared to the other two. And then I got this um, Barber Quarter. It's got Liberty. I think this has been polished or whizzed or something because this just doesn't look natural to me. This, I don't know, something about that one looks really odd. I gotta look at this more because it looks very, the surface is just different. It's not what I'm used to seeing. It, it's almost like an unnatural color. So I think that's been cleaned or something. I might have to replace that. I'm also going to look and see what the proofs look like from this time frame. And I mean, I doubt it's a proof. It looks like it's been polished. Someone took a polishing cloth to it. I mean, you can kind of see right there. 
I'm gonna have to look at that closer. And then I just added this one, this Standing Liberty Variety One 1917. Has some really nice detail on it. It's kind of looks like a nearly full head there. Really nice. I just added that one just moments ago. I got a, in fact, this is nicer than this one. I got a Variety Two. And then you got the silver BU Washington quarter, and then another proof quarter. And again, the fields on these are much cleaner, but these Dansko albums, the little plastic slips become scratched, and then that makes the coin kind of look worse. 1829 capped bust, which, you know, it's got the the dings on it, so I'd like to maybe get another one. It has the lettered edge around it. And I'm missing these two. Now we're into half dollars. And I'd like to upgrade these eventually because they are pretty worn, but I got an 1873 Arrows, Liberty Seated, half dollar. And then this has In God We Trust on the back. And then I got a Barber, half dollar there. Partial Word Liberty. I think I have some nicer Barbers. I've got a ton of Barber halves. Pretty decent one though. And is it in God We Trust? Model and arrows. And then no model, yeah. But I'm not, I don't have the no model one. See that barber quarter there? Something doesn't look right about that. But I've got some really nice coins there. And then we get into real BU ones. A 1945 Walking Liberty BU has some nice toning that's starting to develop there on the edges. A 1954 Franklin half. Then you got the 64 Kennedy half. And then again, a proof, 1971. And then we've got the commemorative half dollars. We have uh, Stone Mountain, 1925. 1923, Monroe and Adams, half dollar. And you got your Booker T. Washington, half dollars from 1946 and 1952. And this one has some cool toning that's starting to develop. Brown toning. And for silver dollars, I'm just missing one, and I have all of the silver dollars. I've got the Liberty Seated No Motto which has been, this has been plugged, unfortunately. These are hard to find. This is still a $250, $300 coin. I like these things. And I'm missing this one. I've got a decent trade dollar. And then a very nice PU Morgan dollar. Some toning starting to develop. And a peace dollar. Again, BU on both of those. And then a nice BU uh, Ike dollar. And I'll show you the backs of these. Real nice BU coins. All the coins in here were BU. I try. Sometimes it's real expensive to do that, so I can't do it. I've got a bicentennial quarter. The last page here. Bicentennial, these are all proofs. You can see the mirror like finish on them. And then you've got a Susan B. Anthony. First year of issue. The Sacagawea dollar, first year of issue. And then the 50 state quarter, first year of issue, and that's also proof. A modern day commemorative dollar. Looks like it has some toning that's starting to develop. And an American Silver Eagle to finish off the album. So I am very excited. 
Like I said, this is a really fun album to put together. And uh, it's a, one of those albums where people go, wow, that's cool when they see it. And I just need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I am done with my Dance Go 7070. So I'm very excited about that. And then I'm going to start upgrading the coins. I'm going to definitely upgrade this, 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 this. And I'd like to upgrade this piece. And I'd like to just continually work on this album. I'm going to upgrade that, some of these. I'd like to get this upgraded to where when you open this album, you're like, wow, this is a... Someone worked really hard on putting together a very nice 7070. So when this is done, I think I've seen these sell for anywhere between, depending on how nice the coins are, you can sell the album all together. And I've seen them go as high, you know, as low as like 1900 bucks to as hot with missing a bunch of coins to having all the coins and selling for as high as, you know, 3000 to five grand. So, and I, mean, I suppose even higher if all your coins are in really, really, really exceptional shape. But one thing I have noticed about selling these albums on eBay is that many times the coins in the album, they if you piecemeal them, you can sell them for more than you can if you include them in, all together in an album. So like the Franklin Half Dollar album, if you do the math on that, it's better to sell the coins individually than it is to sell the album as a whole. So... I find that kind of interesting and sort of unfortunate because that means that you have to spend a lot of extra time listing these individually than you, you know, to get to get your biggest bang for your buck than just saying, hey, I'm going to sell my 7070 album with all the coins in it. So uh, am I going to sell this album in the future? I don't think so. I think this is this with my drape bust and my flowing hair. I think those, this and those two items will be the, will be the items that I pass down. So the, this, the drape bust coin that's graded that I have will definitely be, um, maybe a few other items, but those are the things I hope to keep in the family that I think this is a, just gonna gain value of course and I think this will be cool for uh, my kids one day to have whenever I have kids and just to continue to go in the family uh, for years to come, hopefully. So anyway, well, thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed my Dance Go 77 or 7070 album. And I have to tell you, I do like, you know, I've been a big fan of these uh, Whitman classic albums because they're a little bit cheaper but I have to tell you, I like the dance goes because a lot of these Whitman classic albums don't include proofs. So I definitely uh, like the dance goes over the uh, Whitman classics. I have all these albums, you guys, that I have to, I got, I'm going to do something with. So I'm going to list a bunch of albums, I think, for sale. And uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a good day and uh, like, comment, and subscribe.